In today's video, we're doing something a little bit different. I've got over one hour of FC24 career mode save ideas that I think you should give a go. Of course, if you enjoy any of these ideas, then either leave a comment below with one of your own or subscribe to both this channel and also my main channel where every one of these ideas was posted into a separate video. Hopefully you enjoy this video and let's get started with Leicester City. They spent the majority of their Premier League and then the Champions League money building one of the best youth campuses in the entire country. Of course, Leicester City are now back in the championship, so maybe you should take over the Foxes with someone like Claudio Ranieri, who's also back in career mode now, and try to use youth to build another fairy tale. The majority of the Leicester Academy comes from the English East Midlands, so stick your youth scouts in England, Wales and Scotland, and maybe try and keep them limited to a maximum of 3 stars on judgement and experience until you get promoted back to the Premier League. Promotion is definitely possible in Season 1, so try and get as many youth players into the club and playing so that you're ready for that top flight experience. Football Manager doesn't quite rate Southampton as highly as they do Leicester, but they're another very similarly sized club in the exact same position, really good facilities whereas the youth staff probably aren't as good as they could be. They also require promotion back to the Premier League so you can try and flood their team with top quality English talents as well. Club Bruges are another team with world class facilities but only just about average staff. This means if you limit yourself to having scouts with maybe a maximum of 4 stars, put as much money as you can into your training staff instead, I think Bruges could be a top quality youth based career mode save. Inside career mode, Belgium has this really cool structure where the top half and bottom half of the league split after 30 games and of course, the last Belgium golden generation didn't quite bring the World Cup back to Belgium. If you don't like the look of Bruges, then Standard Liège and Genk are also Belgian teams with very similar stats when it comes to their youth academy. Basically, if you pick one of the teams we've just mentioned that has really good facilities but not very good staff, I would say that go for the best training staff that you possibly can, but maybe sacrifice a couple of stars here and there when it comes to youth scouts. Okay, let's switch up what we're looking at. Facilities are one thing, but sometimes having an academy is all about having the right staff in the right places. It turns out this is exactly what the smaller clubs in today's video all love to do. This includes Valerenga, who are actually rated at the best club in the entire world at recruiting youth. With a perfect 20 out of 20 when it comes to youth recruitment, Valerenga aren't just looking in Norway, they're looking across all of Scandinavia, all of Europe and also all of Africa for the very best talent available anywhere in the world. Norway is probably the best nation inside career mode for any kind of club and country save at the moment. Haaland and Odegaard are two of the best players for their positions, and the rest of the squad could definitely use your academy to strengthen it with some backups or even first choice players. You have the easy availability of playing in the Champions League when you play in Norway, and Valarenga becomes a really elite, youth focused club and country save. If you like playing in Scandinavia as I do, but maybe prefer Denmark, then Mitt Jyland are also rated 20 out of 20 for youth scouting, while IF Bromma Pekiana are Sweden's best scouters, but they're only rated 18 out of 20, so not quite as good as the other two Scandinavian clubs. It's at this point I noticed that it was such a shame that the Colombian League was actually removed from FIFA back on FIFA 21, because they've got about half a dozen teams that are actually ideal saves if you enjoy developing the best wonder kids from basically anywhere on earth. But anyway, let's look at youth coaching before we find some really small teams that you can have some fun with. It's probably quite easy to guess who's the best team in this regard. Barcelona's La Masea is only matched by a single team from Ecuador, but that team isn't even in the game. If you want to produce tons of homegrown players, then make sure you head to Barcelona. Portugal's Sporting, South Korea's Ulsan Hyundai and Germany's Schalke are all slightly smaller teams that also know how to youth train really well, but they do also all fall behind Barcelona when it comes to youth coaching. Okay, let's find some small diamonds that are just waiting to be uncovered out there. We'll be restricting by reputation because this is a really good indicator on Football Manager of the club's size. For reference, Man City are 8,500, Leicester are 6,300, but Burton and Albion have better facilities than both with a reputation of 4,500. If you're English, you might know what St George's Park is, but if you're not, it's the headquarters for the England national team. Every international break, the best players from England meet up and train just outside of Burton, and this is exactly why Burton have the best possible facilities, despite being one of the smallest teams in the English League One. They aren't really known for their academy, but with the right investment, I seriously think that the facilities here could attract some of the best players from anywhere inside the UK. That's exactly what I suggest you do inside your save before using your world-class facilities to bring the world's best players to Burton when you manage to hit the Premier League. 
Zurich are slightly bigger but play in the Swiss Super League. They have some of the best recruitment of any small team in the world. With a chance to play in the Champions League as soon as Season 2, your best players should be able to develop while you still get to play against some of the best teams in Europe. This is kind of a similar situation to Burton, but a little bit further advanced. While Burton, you have to do the road to glory, Zurich are basically in the same position with a squad that's already pretty good and they are able to qualify for Europe in Season 1. Outside of Europe, the A-League has six teams that are actually top tier for their academy. They have Western Sydney Wanderers, Melbourne City, Sydney FC, Melbourne Victory, Wellington Phoenix and the Mariners. They're some of the best academies in Asia, so if you want to make a Pentagon challenge even harder, why not see if you can do one while playing Youth Academy only and starting in Australia. Despite every team we've talked about today, Tottenham Hotspur started the 2023 season on fire. It was almost certain the Spurs would improve under Postacoglu, but no one quite knew how good they would end up. With their new playing style, Spurs have remained one of the most difficult teams to break down, while also having a lethal counter-attack of Son, Johnson, Richarlison and Kulusevski. This gives Spurs one of the most fun squads in FIFA, but it also gives you the opportunity to have a career mode where you can slowly rebuild their defence, with all of their defenders currently having about 85 potential. The Spurs squad could easily change to basically any style depending on the kind of manager you choose to be. Thanks to the talent of Son, Basuma and Madison, it's basically totally up to you if you prefer to return to the Conte style or keep it as a more open and attacking Ange Ball style. The challenge with Spurs is to simply win the Premier League. It might take a year of strengthening and developing, but with Johnson, Van de Ven and Udogi, you could easily have the quickest team in the league. Your first two seasons are your best chance. After that, you'll probably have to replace Son and see if you can create a stronger team for a second go at the league. Luton Town is by far the smallest and least wealthy club to play in the Premier League for decades, but still a team that I think a lot of people are interested in playing in FIFA career mode. You can even try and recreate one of their memorable runs in the League Cup, like the one where they got to the League Cup final in 1988. Compared to the rest of the league, Luton Town has a weak defence and also needs a strengthening in attack. Sadly, their midfield also has little creativity beyond the aging Ross Barkley, so almost every area will need a rebuild. They also have the smallest budget in the league. As with most lower league clubs, Luton Town basically only signed players from England, Ireland and Scotland for most of their history. Their most notable player is definitely club legend Mick Harford, a player, a manager and their current head of youth recruitment. You'll need his talent spotting abilities to replace almost all of your team. If you really want your Luton save to be even harder, why not try and find the next Mick Harford by only signing players from the EFL? This means no foreign leagues, even Scotland and Ireland, and no players from other Premier League teams. You'll have to raid the newly relegated sides each season and hope your signings have a decent amount of potential if you really want to develop the club. Let's be honest, the Australian football scene isn't exactly famous all around the world. Because of this, you might have missed that Western Sydney Wanderers had one of the best first years of all time back in 2013. Not only did they secure the A-League Premiership in their first year, but they also achieved what seemed to be impossible by winning the AFC Champions League the following year. Not only are Wanderers successful, but they're also very popular. They won their first title in front of 42,000 fans, which is still the record attendance in the A-League. Why not see if you can repeat history and take the third best team in Australia to glory both nationally and continentally? In France, Saint-Étienne are by far the best youth-focused rebuild in career mode at the moment. Saint-Étienne has produced some of the most successful players in French football history, and now you start off in a really good position in the second division. Saint-Étienne have the best squad in the league, they've got a squad full of high potential players and a decent budget that you can spend on youth scouts. While you're the manager, see if you can find some new players that have the same quality as William Saliba, Wesley Fofana and Alan Saint-Maximam, all who recently played for the Greens and their youth academy. If you prefer playing in a league with players you've actually heard of, then maybe you should venture into victory with the vibrant vibes of Volendam. A similar situation to North East United, this Dutch team needs the courage to allow a total rebuild. In a league where most of the players are in the 70s for overall and the best ones are actually in the 80s, you begin with a squad that averages just 64 overall. Le Quincio Zifouk will be your biggest hope. His 6 foot 4 frame towers above every other player in your squad and his high 70s potential will also so massively overshadow the rest of your team. The situation is actually quite dire, but you actually only have the second lowest budget in the nation this time. You'll be aiming to outspend, but also outperform Almere City if you want to keep your job for season two. Beyond that, who knows, maybe you'll set up yet another famous Dutch academy. Going into this video, you probably expected this team to be on the list. Fulham were promoted last year, they had a reputation of being quite a yo-yo club, but it looks finally like they could be a long-term addition to the Premier League. 
Their seasons in the championship saw them get a massive squad of players who probably aren't quite good enough for the top division, and this summer they've also lost talisman Alexandra Mitrovic to Saudi Arabia. Last year's Fulham was set up to provide as many winnable crosses for Mitrovic as possible, but this year they've switched to a bit more of a possession-based style. Raul Jimenez and Vinicius are both kind of bad replacements for Mitrovic. With a fairly big budget, someone like Tammy Abraham could be a top addition. It's hard to talk about Fulham without also talking about Full America. In the early 2000s, Fulham had a period where it was the go-to English side for top American talent. Brian McBride was the first that I remember joining, but Clint Dempsey, Carlos Bocanegra and Tim Ream all proved that America was a great place for you to look for that new striker. Marco Silva is also generally focused on buying two types of players. He likes to sign the best players from smaller leagues like Maynor Solomon last year and of course Pal Halinha who's become one of the best midfielders in the league and also players who have been frozen out from Prem squads but still remain quite good. So think about players like Bern Leno and Issa Diop from West Ham. With your rebuilt squad, why not see if you can go one further than their famous 2010 Europa League final loss to Atletico Madrid and win Fulham their first ever European trophy. Since Livingston somehow got to the Scottish Premiership from back-to-back -back promotions from the Scottish League One in 2019, they have been remaining a fairly average team in the Scottish League on FIFA career mode. While unfortunately the Tony Macaroni Arena isn't in FIFA, Livingston's remarkable journey from the lower divisions to the top flight is. Can you rebuild one of the smallest teams in the league to first start challenging the likes of Hearts and Hibs, and then maybe even becoming the first team to overcome the old firm for 40 years? Well, it could be a long save, but you've got plenty of Scottish players out there in worse teams and also in the English leagues, so the possibility to finally break the old firm's stranglehold on Scottish football is definitely there in career mode. Aston Villa is a club with European history and also a founding member of the Football League. After their recent rise from mid-table to European contenders, why not see how quickly you can recreate their historic 1982 European Cup triumph where they became champions of Europe. Aston Villa has a very strong midfield and two amazing FIFA-style wingers in Bailey and Diaby, but their defence could definitely use a rebuild. The club's strengths lie in their midfielders and attacking options, and that's been the case at Aston Villa for as long as I can remember. One of them was Stylian Petrov, who joined Villa from Celtic in 2006. He was a midfield general known for his work rate and his leadership, and he captained the team and became a beloved figure among the Villa fans. John McGinn currently fills a similar role for the villains, but why don't you see if you can scout a Bulgarian replacement from your youth academy? Aston Villa has historically signed players from Ireland, Scotland and England. More recently, they've also moved to sign players from Spain and France, so basically any player from the biggest leagues is a realistic Aston Villa signing. If you want a challenge for your save, why not see if you can recreate this Aston Villa 1982 European Cup win by aiming to become champions of Europe inside your FIFA career mode save. Villa won the competition with a squad that was basically entirely English and Scottish, so why not rebuild your squad and see if you can do it with a fully homegrown team. Brentford FC is a club with a fairly small fan base, but a reputation for smart money ball style recruitment. In FIFA career mode, you can recreate their unique approach to player scouting and development thanks to the new playstyle scouting system. Brentford is known for their analytical approach to player recruitment, and their strengths lie in finding undervalued European talent. This usually means their squad is fairly lowly rated on FIFA, but with very high potential. One of their best finds was Ollie Watkins when he joined from Exeter City in 2017. He was a massively influential signing. His goal scoring helped propel Brentford to the Premier League for the first time ever, and this is the exact style of signing you should be making. Lower league players who are on hot form. Brentford often signs players from England, Denmark and Sweden. The Brentford owner has some big links to Nord Sjælland, so players like Christian Norgaard from Denmark, Pontus Janssen from Sweden have been massive for the Bees. If you want a challenge, why don't you see if you can recreate Brentford's unique scouting approach by creating a top half side that is made up of only Scandinavian players. There's a lot of Scandinavian talent out there right now, so it's all about scouting and making sure you find the right players. Brighton and Nova Albion are known for their crazy ability to find winner kids from tiny nations, and I think this year they're probably one of the most popular career mode saves in the entire Premier League. Brighton excel in ball possession, and their midfield creativity is off the charts, but they do kind of struggle with scoring on FIFA career mode. There's only so many seasons you can rely on Danny Welbeck, but you should definitely be developing Evan Ferguson as soon as possible, because he's one of the brightest attacking talents in the league. 
Lewis Dunk, who's a product of Brighton's youth system, has been such a massive player for the team. His leadership and defensive skills have been instrumental to the club's rise, but the issue with him is his total lack of pace and his advancing age. At 31, he's your captain and highest rated player, but it might be time to scout South America and find a youth academy replacement for season two and onwards. Of course, Brighton do often sign players from South American nations like Ecuador, Peru, Uruguay and Venezuela, but you should also be looking for better and already made talents in England, Germany and the Netherlands. If you can find the right players in the right areas and combine this all together into one mega squad, there's no reason you can't go even further and qualify for the Champions League for the first time in Brighton's history. Sheffield United is a city known for its steel production, but their leading club, Sheffield United, now finds itself at a crossroads. While maybe not as storied as some of their Premier League counterparts, the personality that the Blades have cultivated gives them a unique charm and potential to make your mark in career mode. As you'd expect with the city's steel-based history, Sheffield United have always had a reputation for being solid at the back, but more recently it was their attacking centre-backs that stole the show. Chris Wilder has now left and Heckingbottoms United is back to being hard-working and a defensive side. As a championship side, Sheffield United often sign British players from England, Scotland and Wales. While they aren't the worst team in the league, you'll probably be spending a lot of time trying to find cheap, underrated players to strengthen this side. There's a realistic signing in every single position inside the EFL and some of the smaller leagues inside Europe. Last time Sheffield United were promoted, they nearly qualified for Europe. This makes an easy challenge for me to give you. See if you can beat Sheffield United's ninth place finish last time they were promoted. League. West Ham are potentially one of the most fun career modes in the Premier League. Starting off with one of the biggest and most unique stadiums in the Premier League, I actually think it's the only English stadium to have a running track on FIFA, West Ham have the potential to be just as big as Spurs, Arsenal and Chelsea. The West Ham squad might not have the flair it used to have when Dimitri Payet was attacking midfielder. By far the biggest issue at the Hammers though is their lack of youth. With only two players under 28 years old in their starting 11, Edson Alvarez and Lucas Paqueta seem like youngsters despite being 25 years old. Even though they spent most of it, West Ham managers do still get to spend some of the Declan Rice money in career mode. Buying youth has to be the priority, but make sure you keep looking at South America, the Netherlands and Ireland for more top talent. Replacing someone like Mikel Antonio with Gurassi from Stuttgart might be a really good idea. If rebuilding an old team while also performing in the Premier League sounds too easy, why not see if you can make West Ham become the first team to win all three European competitions? Last year they won the Conference League, why not add the Europa League this season and see if you can then go on to win the Champions League in the next couple of years? Wolverhampton Wanderers, of course commonly known as Wolves, are a team that's going through a rebuild at the moment. If you send out a permanent scout to Portugal to identify the next Moutinho or Neves, this gives you an easy, unique twist to playing a Premier League career mode save. It's not hard to see why Wolves are probably best known for signing Portuguese players. This year they have 8 in their squad, but this is actually a decrease on the 14 from last season and the 16 from the year before this. Is this a move away from Portugal? Well, kind of. Recently they've added a few Brazilians to their squad instead. This is good news for career mode because both Brazil and Portugal are packed full of really fun players for your save. For the past few seasons, Wolves have relied on Neves, Matinho and Jimenez to provide a strong core. Now all three have left, so you'll need to invest hard into both midfield and attack. For a team that's been in the Premier League for six seasons, you'd expect a better squad, but still Wolves have a big budget, so you can easily raid the Liga Portugal for five new starters in the first transfer window. If you'd like a challenge for your Wolves career mode, why not pick a totally different nation to rebuild with? Maybe your version of Wolves can reach Europe with 15 French or 15 Spanish or even 15 Swedish players. It sounds easy, but finding these players in the right rules from the right nations is actually much harder than it seems. Vision. So Racing Club is my suggestion here. They were founded in 1903 and as one of Argentina's most iconic football teams, I think they really deserve your attention. In 1967, the club actually was the first Argentinian club to win the Intercontinental Cup. Their victory against Celtic FC in the final meant that Racing Club were officially the best club in the entire world. More recently though, Racing Club are best known for their academy. Their academy has nurtured some elite talents like Diego Melito, but also three of the World Cup winning squad last year, Acuna, Martinez and Depaul. They all started out at Racing Club. 
Use your academy to try and win the Libertadores, and then see if you can take on the national side to win yet another World Cup. FC Let's 20 are a Dutch club, and they're probably most famous for the 2010 season. They secured their only Eredivisie title under the management of Steve McLaren, and the team displayed quite an impressive style of play, a lot of ball control and possession, but also players winning individual one-on-one -on -one battles. This triumph was pretty important for FC 20, and the fans still look back on this season very, very fondly. If we fast forward eight years though, FC20 faced a very different challenge. They had the threat of relegation and unfortunately they did succumb to dropping down to the second tier. The team went up and down for a while, but in the current season 2023 to four, there's actually quite a lot of optimism because FC20 find themselves third in the table. They're not gonna win the league, they're already nine points behind PSV, but second or third is definitely possible for this team. As you step into the manager's shoes on FIFA career mode, I think the goal is to try and recreate some of that 2010 season's magic, adopting maybe the Steve McLaren style of play and having a career mode that's focused on the Dutch's favourite pastime which of course is developing young footballers. In FIFA they have three very good young talents already, Mies Hilgers, a 22 year old centre back with an impressive potential of 83, Manfred Ugalde is a 21 year old striker from Costa Rica with 82 potential and Yuri Riga is 19 years old at right back, centre mid and left back with 81 potential. So if you can develop some of these players Players, they could also be contributing to the pinnacle of Dutch football, of course, the national team. I think if you can develop FC20 to get a second title, you'll have had a pretty interesting career mode and definitely one that you'll remember for quite a while. They're worth giving a go and I'm surprised more people haven't already tried to do this in the past. Let's switch continents now to North America where DC United have a really good history in the MLS. They had four MLS Cups in the first 10 years. However, now they've been 18 seasons without even appearing in the final. This has really cast a shadow over the team. Your mission is to try and break this dry spell and bring some glory back to Washington DC. They've had some very impressive MLS players. Freddie Adu, I'm sure you've heard all about him, but Wayne Rooney and Bill Hamid have also left their mark in DC. Despite having some very good players, only Freddie Adu has ever tasted any success with the club. As their new manager, the goal of course is clear, try and win an MLS Cup as soon as possible. Additionally, you should also focus on nurturing some more homegrown talents. Freddie Adu at one point was the highest rated player on potential on the entire game of FIFA. If you can find another Freddie Adu, you can also try and improve the national team and maybe even be the first Washington based sports team to win a title since the Washington Nationals did in 2019. So if we shift now to Scotland, Aberdeen stands as the last team outside of Celtic and Rangers to have won the Scottish Premier League, but still barely anyone uses them in career mode. They achieved this feat in 1985 under the management, of course, of Sir Alex Ferguson. Your challenge is to try and rekindle Aberdeen's past glory by trying to win a Scottish League title with them. While of course you could make the big two in Scotland into a big three with Aberdeen, you could also try and emulate Alex Ferguson's career by eventually moving to an English club that's struggling and then you'll probably have about 10 or so seasons to try and match as many titles and competition wins as he did. If you want an even bigger challenge, why don't you also take over the Scottish national team, a team that's never made it out of the group stage at any World Cup ever. If you can try and reach a semi-final, even a quarter final, I think you'd probably become one of the most legendary managers that Scotland have ever, ever had. A club and country save is always super fun. I always recommend them. You're building up two different teams and even when the league becomes easy, the international competitions, you'll still be playing against teams like Spain, England, Brazil, France. So I really do also recommend you possibly give this one a go. Another team that I think is definitely worth more attention than they get is Espanyol. They held a comfortable mid-table position in La Liga for years and years, but last year they got relegated into the second division. But that's probably a reason people don't really want to use them. If you're going to play in La Liga, you'll either go to someone like Atletico Madrid, Real Madrid or Barcelona at the top end, or you'll go to someone down the bottom to try and rescue them from relegation. I think Espanyol is actually a really good second division side though, because they're based in Catalonia in the same city as Barcelona, and I think you could turn them into sort of a Catalonian version of Athletic Bilbao. Try and sign as many Catalan players as possible. There's lists of these out on SoFIFA and they're actually a lot better than the Basque region for producing players. These self-imposed challenges really do make the journey a bit tougher, but ultimately more rewarding if you can overtake Barcelona with a squad that's entirely full of players that would have usually come through their academy, I think that would be an absolutely top class career mode. 
Finally, I also think that one of the biggest reasons to buy a new football game is to play with all the new teams, leagues and players. Sadly though, there are no new leagues on FC24, but there are still a lot of new interesting teams who have either never been on FIFA or have been missing for a long, long time. Today we'll be taking a trip all the way around the world, we'll be looking at a lot of different leagues, tons of different clubs, and hopefully giving you an idea about which teams are most worth picking for your next career mode save. Let's get started with the two most obvious ones and get them out of the way first. Wrexham have been on FIFA for two years now, but they're finally in League 2. I'm not sure more what I can say about Wrexham. The chances are that you'll know a little bit more about them than I do. If you're a fan of the documentary, you know all about their history and their future plans, and you've probably already tried them on one of the past FIFA games. Norse County is the other obvious choice for a new career mode save. They're proudly the oldest club on FIFA, they're celebrating their 142nd birthday this season, something that only Sheffield FC can also brag about. If that's not enough for you to pick them, then I personally can recommend them. On FIFA 23, I did a 7 year career mode with them. I took them from the modded National League all the way up to the Premier League and it was really fun basically every step along the way. Moving from England over to France, let's take a look at a team I've not seen a single person mention as a good career mode save this year. Concor Now is not only hard for me to pronounce, but it's also a really fun career mode save idea. They're based in a tiny town inside Brittany, which is an area of France that's known for producing some of the best players in French history. At the minute, you could put out a top quality team with players from this region. Colo Moani, Kamavinga, Osman Dembele, Mattia Guendouzi, Higuain who's now retired, and Robin Lenormand would start in the majority of national teams from around the world. I really recommend you try and build up Concarnau as a homegrown team, full of players from the Brittany region and seeing how far you can get in Ligue 1. Of course, France and England are both super mainstream places to do a career mode save in. I know people who are subscribed to this channel much prefer doing a youth-only road to glory using just Albanian teenagers, so let's find some tiny clubs from obscure leagues that are just as fun as these ones. Belgium team RWDM might not be the smallest team in this video, but they do have one of the weirdest names. They're owned by the same American who has stakes in English side Crystal Palace, Brazilian side Botafogo and French side Lyon, but they do have the potential to become a total powerhouse in Belgium. They were promoted last year with Kylian Hazard as one of their best players and you can create a Belgian dynasty with him pretty easily. I think the most interesting part about this save is who they have out on loan. It's only a single player, but Ernest Nuamar has been sent on loan to Lyon. You might never have heard of him, but he has potential to be one of the best wingers in the entire game. Recall him on day one, try and build your entire side around him, and when he hits his potential, he'll be a similar level to someone like Rodrigo or Rafael Liao, which is absolutely insane for the Belgian league. If you prefer Austrian teams with a pretty unique challenge over the Belgian league, then thanks to Wavellino on our Discord for finding the exact save you might want to do. It works just like this. You'll manage the newly promoted Blauweiss Linz, but you can only sign players from countries whose flag contain the colours blue and white. If you want to be super strict, you can make it so it's only blue and white, but if you want to be a bit easier, you can include maybe red, blue and white, and there you can use America as well. So if you want to go strict, that means you'll have to sign players from countries like Argentina, Uruguay, Finland, Greece, Scotland, Israel and Honduras. Sure, it's not super specific to the club other than the fact that Blau Weiss means blue white in German, but you can actually do the exact same thing with Rot Weiss Essen in Germany. This selection for Rot Weiss Essen would be way less restrictive. As German, this means red and white. That means you can use players from Austria, Denmark and England, as well as some of the other clubs from around the world. While lots of European leagues have had a ton of changes and new teams added, two of my favourite FIFA leagues had basically no changes. As you'd expect, Australia and the USA basically stayed the exact same, except for one club. St. Louis City were partially on the game last year, but this year they're fully incorporated into the MLS. St. Louis is one of those cities in the USA that's actually soccer first. They could easily rise to the top of the MLS like Atlanta and Los Angeles did, who were both very focused on soccer. St. Louis actually won their MLS division this year in their first ever season, so there's a lot of potential at this club. And again, it's a save I personally can recommend because I used them as part of my Pentagon Challenge last year. So that's six new teams that I think are worth your time on FC24. Not and Wrexham were the obvious choices, but Concornal, St. Louis, RWDM and Linz are all new and massively interesting. Make sure you give them all a try. If you're interested in getting your save in my next Rate to Save video, make sure to check out the Discord where there's still time to submit your team. But thanks for watching this video. Check out the playlist and the video on screen right now for more FC24 content. Thanks for watching, cheers and goodbye. 
Family Cow's resurgent isn't one that's super well known, but only seven years before their Primera Liga return, they were playing all the way down in Division 5. The club's commitment to developing young talents played a massive part of this rise back to the top and is also helping to contribute to the growth of Portuguese football on a continental level. With their focus on nurturing some emerging talents, Family Cow seeks to make a lasting impact not only on Portuguese football but also the entire continent of Europe. Using the potential of its youth academy and the world-class scouts to improve their club, they found some really good talents over the past couple of years, mainly in South America. Players like Ugarte, Pedro Gonçalves, and Ivan Jamie, if you can keep a couple of these players around, they can give you a really good base to push on into European football. In Ireland, Shamrock Rovers stand as the most successful club in their footballing history. They have 21 league titles and 25 cup wins. The club's next step has to be trying to reach past the group stages of a major European competition. It looks like the Europa League is probably the most realistic target here. You'll need to spam youth prospects to try and improve, but there's a good generation of Irish talents out there, making this the ideal starting point for a club and country save. See if you can reach the knockout rounds in both the Europa League and also see if you can get Ireland to reach the knockout rounds in the World Cup, something that really hasn't qualified for a long, long time. Founded by Romanian football legend George Hadji, SSC Farul places a massive emphasis on youth development. The club made history by winning its first Liga 1 title in 2017, showcasing some of the successes of its academy. Under Hadji's vision, SSC for all will keep promoting as many young talents as possible, not only for the club's success, but for the overall advancement of Romanian football. After a period of domestic success, you'll now need to rebuild this club with young players to get the 7th best Romanian team back to the top inside your career mode. See if you can make an entire Romanian national team full of players from your academy, is what George Hadji would want you to do. If you want a powerhouse in Saudi Arabian football, then Al Ittihad could be the right choice for you. They clinched last year's title and are still the only club in the world to ever win two AFC Champions Leagues. The club's success in domestic competition has definitely solidified its position as one of the strongest teams in Saudi Arabia, but they definitely need to improve the amount of Saudi Arabian players in their squad. You should set the club up to play a very significant role in the development and promotion of football in the region. With very little Saudi talent in the game by default, why not see if you can make the entire Saudi national team play for you under your leadership domestically? You have enough money to do this, but it's going to be a tough challenge to try and buy all of these players from all of your rivals. Since Liverpool are one of the most famous and successful football clubs in England, known for their passionate fans and of course their long history of success. In career mode, you'll get to hear the legendary you'll never walk alone before every single home game at Anfield. And despite their status as one of the biggest clubs in the world, it's now been a couple of years since success, so the fans are starting to get a little bit restless. As you'd expect, Liverpool has one of the best squads in the league. Their strengths definitely include their front three of Nunez, Gakpo and Salah, while they also have a revamped midfield and an aging but still solid defence. Most people would agree the last big improvement to the squad came when Virgil van Dijk joined for a world record fee for a defender in 2018. His presence transformed the club's defence and led to their Champions League win in 2019, their Premier League win in 2020 and the improvement they've seen this season as well. This is the kind of signing you'll need to be doing, big transfers from the best of the rest to strengthen your squad. Outside of the Premier League, Liverpool often sign players from the Netherlands, Brazil and Italy. Some examples of these players include Dirk Kout from Feyenoord, while Alisson and Mo Salah both came from Italy. If you'd like a bit more of a long-term goal in your save, why not see if you can win the two titles the Reds need to overtake their massive rivals Manchester United. With Liverpool on 19 trophies and United on 20, You'll have to overcome smaller rivals Manchester City, who will also be serious contenders for basically every single trophy. Manchester City is a club known for transformation in the modern era, fueled by a financial backing. In FIFA career mode, you just have to maintain their ascent by becoming a dominant force in English and European football. Big money signings, big academy investment and trying to get a quadruple are all going to feature heavily in your save. Manchester City boasts a star-studded squad with strengths in attack in midfield. Their biggest strength is their creative playmakers and their prolific goal scorers, Erling Haaland and Julian Alvarez being two of the best strikers in the league. I'm not too sure who Man City's most influential signing of all time is. Sergio Aguero, David Silva, Kevin De Bruyne and Erling Haaland all transform the club in different ways and that's the kind of signings you'll need to make if you want to improve Manchester City. But realistically, the team is probably able to keep winning titles even if you sign nobody for half a decade. 
You could go all out and sign another world superstar. Mbappe, Bellingham and Vinicius Jr. would all improve the team, but when you're spending that much, you'd kind of expect them to win titles almost single-handedly. Instead, why not see if you can improve Rico Lewis, Phil Foden and Julian Alvarez to actually reach their potentials? While winning trophies with Man City is one of the easiest saves you could do, why not see if you can also win the first ever English quadruple? The league title, the FA Cup, Carabao Cup and Champions League are all winnable in the first season for Man City, but you'll have to be on top form to never slip up in a single one of those competitions. Manchester United are one of the most iconic and successful football clubs in the world. In FIFA career mode, you can go one of two ways. You could go academy focused and try and recreate the class of 92, which was a group of academy players who went on to become club legends, or you can go for a superstar rebuild, just like Manchester United have tried several times in the past decade. Manchester United are in such a weird position. Half their defense is world class on FIFA, including Varane and Onana, which I don't think many people would agree with in real life. The other half is still good, but they won't work in the same system as the good half. Maguire and Lindenoff need low block, Varane and Dallo would probably want high pressing and a high line. The attack is in a similar situation, Casemiro, Eriksen and Bruno work best in a possession heavy style, but Rashford, Anthony and Hoyland are all most effective in a rapid counter-attacking system. You'll need a unifier to try and mesh the two systems together. Eric Cantona, who signed in 1992 for 1 1.5 million, was the best player Man United had when they were in this situation. His impact was massive. His personality lifted the pressure off some of the younger players, while he also had versatility that allowed him to play both technical and physical styles of football depending on the opposition, of course. While looking for your new Cantona, remember that Manchester United most often signs players from France, Portugal and England. If rebuilding one of the most demanding teams in the world isn't enough of a challenge, why not see if you can recreate the class of 92 inside your career mode? If you spend enough time developing young players, see if you can beat the golden generation that would go on to produce six players who would go on to have over 80 overall on the next FIFA game. Newcastle United is a club on the rise. They've got new owners, new signings, and lots of new fans. After their Saudi owner made people think they'd spend millions, instead they've spent money smartly and have a really balanced, good young team. On the pitch inside FIFA, Newcastle have a solid but slow defense, a top midfield that could maybe use a little bit more attacking firepower and two pretty decent strikers. For as long as I can remember, Newcastle has always been a club that's known for having iconic strikers. I'm not sure Isaac has reached that level just yet, so this season their strength will probably lie in organised defences and making the most of Trippier sent pieces. Of course, Alan Shearer is Newcastle's most influential signing of all time. When he returned to his boyhood club for a world record fee in 1996, he instantly became a club legend with his prolific goal scoring. It would be cool if you could find a new Shearer in your academy, so why not see if you can get an academy player to break his goal scoring record. Eddie Howe has built a Newcastle team that is still mostly English, but a few players have joined from Spain, France, and Germany recently. With a Champions League qualification, go ahead and sign basically any player from anywhere in the world. There's a lot of challenge in a Newcastle save already. They've got a busy schedule with all their competitions, you've got a demanding board who gives you tough objectives, but if you'd like a real challenge, why not see if you can bring the Champions League to the northeast of England for the first time ever by winning the final and bringing it home to Newcastle. This, but Luton Town is a lamentably lackluster side of Premier League losers. They're four overall points below the average, and that doesn't sound that difficult or actually that far below par, but if you take right every single young, under 18 year old player from the rest of the league's teams, this will actually grow to 9 points on average. 9 points is a lot, that's more than an entire season of development even if you have 94 rated players. It might be a good idea to hold off on playing with Luton though until they get their stadium scanned into the game, but to give you an idea on their situation, they're the only Premier League team for 12 years to not have a single gold card in an ultimate team. This means every player in their squad is rated 74 or lower. While the Hatters are actually facing an uphill struggle, they're also one of the most popular saves on FC24 as you would expect. This team actually has players that you've heard of, Ross Barkley, Tahi Chong, Marvellous Makamba and Issa Kabori. They've all played for big Premier League sides in the past. All of them have either not hit their potential or are starting to get a little bit older though. Of course, being a Premier League team means you'll have a big budget, right? Well, how big is this budget going to be? 50 million? 100 million? 200 million? Well, no, for Luton, you'll need to save their season for just 16.5 million pounds. This is lower than multiple championship teams, including Norwich and Leicester City, and it's actually less than six teams in the Belgian Pro Division, which of course is a much, much smaller and easier league to be playing in. 
With such an unfancy team, maybe you can be the one that plays to their strength and sees them safe for a second season. Your budget will triple for year 2 and probably triple again in year 3, so that's when the rebuilds can really start to happen. With just two teams left and our list managed to merely muster a mediocre squad in FIFA, which is miles from their mid-table might in real life. They're only rated lower than average by about 4 overall, but because the overalls in the Scottish League are so much lower, this is actually quite high as a percentage. I've picked them for this video for two good reasons though. The first is Lennon Miller, the second is Luca Ross. These two homegrown prospects that could easily become the future of the national team are absolutely key to your save. I won't spoil their potentials, but if you're interested in finding out what they are, make sure you have a look right now. If those two future household names aren't enough, you could also bring back Max Johnson from Austria after he departed last summer. 20% of the Scottish League now has a stadium in the game, so it's probably the best time to actually do a save in the north of Britain for a couple of decades. Ending the dominance over the big spending Celtic and Rangers is the dream, but both of their budgets are about 10 times bigger than our little Motherwell. This save could be about three things, academy, academy, and academy. They might not be a totally awful team like the one from India we mentioned earlier, but they are a bad team in a pretty bad situation. Qualifying for Europe will solve most of your problems, but developing Ross and Miller will be key to getting Motherwell back into the limelight with your youth academy. Okay, so that's the rundown of the four most rubbish rejects on FIFA, and now it's time to figure out our winner. At first, I thought this was going to be Patronato in Argentina, but they're not actually available in career mode because they're just in the Libertadores or the Sudamericana. So instead, we're heading back to India, and Punjab are truly the worst team on the game. With a staggering 7 points below the average overall rating in their squad, Punjab is undeniably in a league of their own when it comes to being awful on FC24. However, once again, when we remove all the under-21s from all the other teams in the league and Punjab, this deficit balloons to a jaw-dropping 12 points on average worse than every other team in this league. This is a monumental challenge that lies ahead because Punjab's predicament is so bad and their prospects are so bleak that I think it actually does make it quite a fun and quite an attractive save to test how good of a manager you actually are. Can you actually turn the tide for this struggling Indian outfit and make them a really good team for the first time ever? Well, forget the massive budgets that the big European clubs will have, here it's all about making the most out of the tiny resources you do actually have. This is a test of how good of a manager you are, how good you are at finding hidden gems, how good you are at transforming a squad into something special, and you'll need to be world class at both of these things because you start out with a budget that's barely big enough to even hire a youth scout. Who knows, perhaps against all the odds, your Punjab can rise from the depths and shine in the Asian football scene. It'll be a quite a big task, but it's precisely this kind of challenge that makes FIFA Crew Mode truly fun. If you do do the save and manage to win the Asian Champions League, please make sure to send this to me on the Discord that's linked in the description, because the first person that does that will 100% make it into one of my Reviewing Your Save series. I also Hopefully think that Paris FC, of course a club based in the capital of France, would be a really cool career mode. I have seen one or two people use this team, but back when they first were added into the game, it seemed like every other save was with Paris FC, trying to overcome Paris Saint-Germain. While PSG have never actually won the Champions League, you could try and do it with Paris FC in a different way. Of course, France's youth academies at the minute are pumping out amazing talent after amazing talent, and Paris FC are just one of many, many small clubs in the capital city. If you can develop your academy, build your team in a totally different way to PSG, then that again would be a really interesting and really fun career mode save. There's also a ton of players out there who were actually born in Paris, so you could try and build some kind of a homegrown squad, everyone from Paris, it would be quite tough, but I think any kind of youth academy save with Paris FC would be really interesting. They do actually have a couple of players who already have quite high potential, so why don't you see if you can bring some of them along for the ride? But as manager, I think the objective is clear. Try and embrace an organised defensive style with quick counter-attacks, play in a totally different way to PSG, try and cultivate some skillful players, make your own squad that doesn't need a Neymar, Messi and Mbappe to win the title. It'll probably take you about 10 or so seasons to do it, but you could easily become the best side in Paris, of course surpassing the much more renowned PSG. 
I We're beginning in India with North East United. Every player in their team is a whopping seven points below average compared to the rest of the Indian league. You go into season one with your star player being a 35 year old Frenchman who will basically instantly retire. Your best prospect in the starting squad has 64 potential, which is still actually below the average overall rating in this league, as well as you having the smallest budget. Side note, but interestingly, their owner is actually an Indian actor called John Abrahams. I'd never heard of him, but after asking ChatGPT, it suggests that he could be compared to Western actors like Dwayne The Rock Johnson or Vin Diesel. I mean, imagine doing an RTG with one of those as your owners. Can you struggle to get this awful Indian team into Asian Champions League football and maybe even be the first Indian team to reach a final in the Asian Champions League? Talk about starting to the bottom and rising to the top. If you prefer playing in the league, today I'll be giving you the rundown on every single Premier League team for career mode. It took me ages to make this video, this year's was over 20 hours of work, so I'd really appreciate you dropping a like and subscribing if you want to see more career mode content. For every team in the league, we'll look at their squad, I'll give you some signing suggestions and a challenge for your save. Skip along the bottom of the video if you want to see a specific team, but anyway, let's get straight into it with AFC Bournemouth. AFC Bournemouth is a club that achieved quite a bit of success while lower down the English football pyramid. They're probably the only team in the league to actually achieve a full road to glory, with Luton Town being the only other real contender. Bournemouth possesses quite a strong attack but can be vulnerable defensively. The club's strengths lie in their pacey forwards and technical midfielders. Thankfully their whole defence actually does have the potential to improve, with Milos Kerkes potentially even being a Champions League level left back. Callum Wilson who joined the club for an undisclosed fee in 2014 was an influential signing in their rise. His consistent goal scoring played a crucial role for Bournemouth's first promotion to the Premier League. You could re-sign him, but look for players with a similar profile to lead your attack in Instead. Dominic Solanke is kind of similar, but the Cherries could definitely use a new start in striker. After their bad start to the season, your biggest challenge is to try and stay in the Premier League in Season 1. See how far you can get into the Cups and use this money to improve the squad for Season 2 and hopefully a mid-table finish. From here on, either try and progress into the top half or move to clubs to a more reputable Premier League team. Arsenal are a club with a rich history known for their attractive style of football and cutting edge stadium, the Emirates. I'd say they're ready for you to recreate their 2003-4 invincible season inside career mode, which of course was when Arsenal went the entire league season unbeaten, which is an unmatched feat in the Premier League. Arsenal boasts a very young, strong attacking force, but recently their issues have definitely been defensively. Their strengths lie in quick and skillful wingers and a quite a good amount of midfield creativity, but you should definitely invest in another box-to-box -box midfielder to replace Thomas Partey. Thierry Henry, who signed for 11 million in 1999, is one of Arsenal's greatest ever signings. His prolific goal scoring ability and impact on the club make him totally legendary. It might be a cool idea to sign someone with a similar tall winger profile, convert them to a striker, and see if you can find the new Thierry Henry. Similar could be said for Patrick Vieira. Arsenal's historically signed players from France, Spain and the Netherlands. Some notable players from these nations include Patrick Vieira, Cesc Fabregas and Robin van Persie. As we said earlier, the Invincible season is more than doable with their current squad, so why don't you see if you can recreate Arsenal's famous Invincible season by going your entire league campaign unbeaten in career mode. In the southernmost state of Austria, a state called Corinthia, you can find a football club called Wolfsburger AC. They first made a bit of notoriety by getting into the group stage of the Europa League back in 2020. The season after, in 2021, they reached the ground of 32. This slow and steady improvement did end, they didn't go on to reach the quarterfinals, but you can strategically leverage their location to fill their academy realistically with players from Austria of course, but also Croatia, Italy and Slovenia, with all of these nations being within 50 miles of this football club's headquarters. Using this diverse pool of talent, you can definitely try and go for Europa League glory. These nations produce some of the best players inside the game, so you can definitely try and win a first European trophy for Wolfsburger AC. With roots dating back to the 1950s, Shandong Taishan holds a significant place in the history of Chinese football. While the rest of the league has collapsed and gone bankrupt, they stayed afloat. The club's consistent success and availability means that they have solidified their position as one of the strongest teams in Chinese football, but also in Asia. Why don't you see if you can give Chinese football a second wind? See if you can win a Champions League with a Chinese team from a league that has totally fallen away and all the talents have left for other nations. As a team that I've mentioned plenty on this channel, FC Nordschieland's commitment to youth development sets it apart. 
The club's strategy focuses on nurturing and promoting young talents from Denmark and Africa, and it's now been over a decade since their last league triumph in 2011-12. They won the Danish Superliga title that year, but haven't really won anything since. Can you build a team of only under 21 year old players, try and grab glory and showcase the effectiveness of the Right to Dream Academy? It's a fun challenge that's actually kind of related to the ethos of the club. So that's the ideal situation for a fun, interesting and realistic career mode save. Of all the great teams in English football history, Huddersfield Town's golden era in the 1920s probably isn't the most famous. The Terriers achieved a historic feat by winning three consecutive English top flight titles from 1923 until 1926. This is something that wasn't matched until Manchester United did it in 2018 and Manchester City did it a little bit more recently. I think you could basically totally recreate history by building a team that has a load of players from Yorkshire, just like the original team did. This team would include players like Carl Walker, Harry Maguire, John Stones and Calvin Phillips, and if you really wanted a very good new striker, you could even pick up Erlen Haaland, something that I think every Huddersfield fan has dreamt about at some point in the past year. In France, Chelsea is a club with plenty of recent success, mainly thanks to their impressive financial backing and their pretty successful youth academy. More recently though, their academy players are used to finance billion pound splurges on young talent that hasn't quite matured quite as quickly as they would have wanted. On FIFA, Chelsea boasts a well-balanced squad with strong attacking and lots of defensive options. Their strengths lie in a pacey attack and a pretty strong and physical defence, but the majority of their younger players are either injury prone or pretty low on composure. One of Chelsea's more influential signings of all time was Didier Drogba, who joined for £24 million back in 2004. It was his goals and leaderships that were pivotal for Chelsea winning the Champions League in 2012, and this is the exact type of player Chelsea need to lead their attack. Jackson could become this level eventually, but when players like Werner, Lukaku, Morata, Falcao and Fernando Torres have all failed to step up, you'll need to find the exact right player for this role. Chelsea often signs players from France, Brazil and Germany, so make sure you're scouting all three of these with your youth academy scouts. You can also see some of their best recent players have come from these countries, including Thiago Silva and Marla Gusto from France, David Washington and Andre Santos from Brazil, and Christian Nkunku from Germany. While rebuilding Chelsea should be your first goal, if you want a bigger challenge, why not try and recreate Chelsea's transformation under Roman Abramovich? To do this, you'll need to win multiple Premier League titles and the Champions League faster than the 10 years it took Roman's Chelsea to do it. Crystal Palace is a club that's probably best known for their fans and fun to watch football. In FIFA career mode though, neither of these things are really represented that well, but it's still a squad that I really enjoy using. They've got skillful wingers, they've got strong midfielders and rapid defenders, and this all makes them perfect for a career mode save. Crystal Palace has always been a side that's known for rapid, tricky wingers, but the club talisman Wilfred Zaha finally left the club in the summer. This season, their strength lies in organized defenses and a pretty good set piece record, but if you want the club to progress, you'll need either Elise or Eze to step up into Zaha's place. I think that Crystal Palace signing of Zaha, who rejoined the club after a spell at Manchester United, really is one of the most important transfers in their history. His flair and his goal scoring kept Palace up almost single-handedly some seasons, despite them not actually spending that much of their transfer budget. Crystal Palace often signs players from England, Senegal and the Ivory Coast, Basically every single nationality in Africa has been represented at some point in the past decade, so replacing Zaha with someone from Algeria, Egypt or Nigeria is definitely a realistic option. Even after your rebuild, you'll still have some challenges to complete. Palace have never won the Premier League, they've never won the FA Cup, never won the EFL Cup and never played in a major European trophy. If you try and trick off all these objectives one by one until you make Palace one of the best teams in London, I can promise you'll have a super fun career mode save. If you're under 20, you might not realise that Everton are one of England's biggest teams. They have a legacy of top flight football dating back to 1888. They've had European campaigns, league wins and cup successes. If you're interested in their most famous season, check out the 1985 title winning season under Howard Kendall that I made a video on three years ago. Everton have a pretty well-rounded squad with a physical midfield, an average defence and some pretty decent strikers. Rebuilding their midfield to provide more goals and assists is probably quite important to you, as I'd say James Garner is pretty much their only creative midfielder and he's 72 rated. 
Everton will be hoping that Beto can be an influential signing, just like Dixie Dean was, a club legend who scored 60 league goals in the 1927-28 season. His incredible goal scoring record still remains unmatched in the Premier League, and I'm not going to suggest you try and match this with Beto, but Everton loves an iconic striker. Think about Tim Cahill, Gary Lineker and even the homegrown Wayne Rooney. As you can see, Everton often signs players from England, Ireland and Belgium. They're about to lose their Irish fullback and captain Seamus Coleman to retirement, so see if you can scout a replacement to fill the gap that he'll leave. Everton also have a reputation for signing unwanted players from bigger clubs, so that could be a fun avenue to go down in your save. If you'd like a challenge for your Everton save, why not try and recreate their last title winning side? Everton's strategy in their 1984-85 title win emphasised a strong defence, it required midfield control and it relied on clinical attacking, high work rate and aggression. Develop a team following this formula and see if you can secure a first division title for the first time in nearly 40 years. Based in the Basque Country, SD Ibar gained promotion to La Liga back in 2015 and slowly established themselves as a top flight side. As one of the many clubs in the Basque region, there's no official rule here, but since relegation, it would be really interesting to see a Basque road to glory save. Let's be honest, Athletic Club are already a top 5 team, so doing it this way with a second division club would be way more satisfying. The Ipuri Municipal Stadium is one of the coolest and most unique stadiums in the game. Surrounded by mountains, it helps contribute to the feeling of the club's strong connection to its fans and possibly its region under your managership. It's hard to not love a save with a big restriction like this, and I think this is one of the most realistic ones you can really add to your career mode saves. IF Elfsberg are one of Sweden's oldest football clubs, and they're a club that's won six domestic titles. They were so close this season to a seventh, but the team missed out on the final day of 2023 by just two goal difference. Thanks to the seasons in Sweden starting in February, you can fully replay this season to give them the title they so nearly won. With a historic past and a strong foundation for an even better future, IF Elfsberg can become a formidable presence in Swedish and maybe even European football. Situated on the Black Sea coast, Trabzonspor holds a special place in Turkish football. They're the most successful club outside Istanbul, with 7 league titles and 10 domestic cups. The club has a top quality academy, but despite big offers, actually rarely sells their players abroad. This is perfect for the average FIFA career mode player. With the fourth best squad in the league, why not see if you can build a fully Turkish academy team, rebuilding the aging national team and seeing if you can bring Turkey to their first ever World Cup final, beating their 2002 third place finish. As a newcomer to the MLS, Nashville SC made an immediate impact by reaching the playoffs in their inaugural season in 2020. As manager of a fairly new club, you have a club that has history still to be written. With their bright yellow kits, or the boys in gold as they like to be called, they have one of the most interesting leagues in FIFA to play in with so many unique rules, unique systems and random quirks. You can check out my MLS video if you're interested in learning more about the league, but as the club, why not see if you can match your rivals Atlanta United, who now have two MLS Cups and win their first one in their second season. So that Nottingham Forest are one of the Premier League's most historic clubs with a pretty remarkable past, but I'm sure I've mentioned that enough times by now. If you want one of the longest possible Premier League career mode saves, I think you should try and replicate their back-to-back -back European Cup triumphs in 1979 and 1980. The Forest squad has had a lot of changes over the past two seasons, but now they have a young talented attack with Awanyi, Gibbs White, Hudson Adoy and Alanga all having tons of potential. Behind them they have Ibrahim Sangaro, who was someone that both me and Tifo Football love to recommend for every team to sign, but then they have a pretty average defence. It's probably here that you'd want to strengthen first. Sangare has the potential to go on to be one of Forest's most important signings of all time, but they could really use a new Stuart Pearce at left back or a new Des Walker at centre back. Two world class players who had dominant personalities that they found from the lower league clubs. Keep an eye out for regens because someone like Chris Smalling's or Kyle Walker's regens could easily fill these gaps within two seasons. If you're interested in realism, Forrest have had a ton of Irish and Scottish players in their academies, and of course, more recently, their Greek owner means lots of Greek players too. You might need some of these potential Greek superstars if you plan to recreate Forest back-to-back -back triumphs. All you need to do is win consecutive UEFA Champions Leagues inside career mode. I mean, that sounds quite simple, right? 
Outside of football, FC St Pauli is probably best known for its distinctive culture of community engagement, activism and inclusivity. On the pitch though, they're just a very average second division side. While the hype of a club with ideals that St Pauli stand for has started to die down, the idea of a club having morals and principles is still pretty interesting. With rivals Hamburg also being a second division side, you should be aiming to achieve promotion ahead of them and be in the top tier within two seasons. I think you should probably strictly adhere to a self-imposed rule where you only sign youth players or free agents. This feels like the closest way of being anti-establishment that you can possibly be inside career mode. Back in the 1970s, Ascoli won a shock Serie B title against massive financial constraints and the dominance of some larger footballing sissies. I think this makes them perfect for a modern day Italian underdog save. Managing at Ascoli gives you a challenge of trying to recreate this improbable success with a pretty interesting side, and you can easily defy expectations and compete at the top level in Serie A. Once you've been promoted, you'll be the smallest side in the league by far, so even surviving for a single season would be considered a massive success. This is the kind of save where you'll find players you'll remember for years to come. You'll have 60 rated heroes that help you upset an 80 rated team, you'll have crazy formations that somehow actually work, and you'll be having to make the most of a very awful academy that you don't have the funds to improve. Burnley are actually a club with a pretty underrated history and a reputation for tight defensive football. In FIFA career mode, you can recreate both of these things by replicating their historic first division title in 1960 and also focusing on their defensive solidity. Burnley, of course, are best known for their strong, compact defence, but recently things have been totally different. Even in away games at bigger clubs, Burnley have totally dominated possession. They focus on wearing down their opposition with lots of passing and you should make sure that you're strengthening your wings and your attack as soon as possible. Danny Ings, who joined from Bournemouth in 2011, was a massive goal scorer for Burnley. His performances in the championship played a crucial role for Burnley's promotion in 2014. That's the kind of player that you'll need leading your line, someone hardworking and someone who can finish. Danny Ings is probably even an option for you. You should be able to grab him super cheap from West Ham in season one. Even with their new playing style though, Burnley still mainly signs players from England, Ireland and Scotland. While Vincent Kompany is in charge, also expect to sign players from Belgium and of course clubs that are in the Manchester City football group. Why don't you see if you can recreate some of Burnley's history by winning them a second first division title, but this time with European football and continental tiki-taka style of play.